Greetings my friends and welcome to Nerdbrain. I am Leland and today is going to be the first time ever I'm going to make a painting tutorial in English. So if you like the content and you like this channel, then please subscribe and help me grow my channel. The model I'm painting today is a 3D printed model from Artisan Guild, Solaria the Saint, Requiem Brotherhood. She's an awesome, awesome model and let's be honest, not safe for work, but it's it's only plastic. So come on, please. I'm starting up with very thin coats of paint of Cadian flesh tones. I've thinned it down quite a bit, almost too much. So I gave her about four or five thin layers of coats of this uh, paint, but I really, really hate if I can see the brush strokes. So that's avoided by thinning it down too much. Sometimes you can do it way, way too much. But is it the first uh, step of the miniature? Just uh, have fun with it. That's the most basic thing with miniature painting. It's to have fun. And if you can see here, I'm not really that neat. I can always clean it up later but making sure that I move fast with this paint because once it's dried up, then it's going to clunk and we do not want it to clunk at this point. The pencil I'm using is my actually my go-to workhorse. It's an army painter starter brush. I just love it. It's been with me in about, what, five years now? And it's still great. Uh, not for for fine details or anything like that, but it's great for all the messy work like this. And you really need to let it dry completely before moving on to the next layer of skin tone. And that's what I've been doing. This is the absolute last coat of paint I'm giving her at her flesh tones. And my idea was to give her uh, a see-through veil on her, her uh, what's it called? Cloaks or uh, something like that. I don't know what it's called, but that was the idea. But once I uh, completely finished her, I figured out that it's going to be too uh, thick. It's it's too thick to be see-through. Gollum and flesh, I'm thinning it down a bit. As you can see here, I'm watering it down with a couple of drops of water. I don't normally use uh, this contrast media because I, you can use water just as well. Just make sure that you are quick about it. It cannot dry out. Once it dries out, then it'll be ugly. So go fast. So that's why I just thinned it down and let it soak into all the recesses. The amount spending on painting her up with uh, very thin coats of paint leaves you behind with a end result that doesn't have any brush strokes. And we don't like brush strokes, especially when we are painting skin. And let it dry. We need to let it dry. Cadian flesh tone. One more time. And I'm using a thinner block brush. And this time I'm going to layer in the next color set and I'm thinning it down a bit. And as you can see here, I'm pushing the paint upward. Again, following all the contour of her muscles and uh, her contour of her legs, 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 and just moving the paint around. As you can see, it's quite quite thin. Step one is complete. I just finished up boosting the original skin color and now it's time for Kislev Flesh. I'm thin mixing it up 50-50 with the Cadian Flesh and then going in one more time. Again, very, very thin coats and I'm pushing the skin colors upward. So like to see the, it's just like the, the light is catching on to the raised areas from above. Again, dragging from the bottom and just pushing it up. 
I may have gone quite thin on on this piece of uh, <laughs> as you can see here I'm I'm struggling to keep it in the right places it's moving around way too much that I I I, I struggled with this so my best advice is not to overload your brush with the with the paint but the result is well it's it's okay as you can see here and now one more time i've thinned it down a bit more mixed it in with the kislev flesh a little more in my previous mixture and now i'm following all the outlines of the muscle not uh, placing it all over the place just just highlighting it basically and especially on her shoulders because the light is from above and going down as you can see at this moment it looks quite pale uh, compared to the skin color beneath but trust me it'll be better once it's dried up and on both arms of course and here's my picture of my thumb there then the skin color is done in my opinion now again back to those bandages i don't know what it's called but again my plan was to make it some kind of see-through but well it didn't quite work out because it's too big uh, compared to the to, to the skins so i just decided to paint it all white so corax white i thinned this down again and again i did it too much as you can see i'm kind of sloppying away with it and it's blobbing all over the place not that much control so, ah, it's not that's not good so i try to suck it up with my brush here and uh, smearing it out completely there's not much you can do by soaking it up and then waiting for it to dry and come in again with less paint so there you have it the bandages or what you'll call it are done abaddon black for her veil her for for her hood or what you call it i decided to paint it all black uh, I I had this idea of her being some kind of holy nun or something like that. So a black hood, that lo that looks okay. Administratum gray for the sword. I've planned on making this kind of uh, non-metal metal technique. I'm not that great with this technique. I'm still learning. I think I overdo it all the time. The idea is to make it look like metallic material without using metallic paint. So I, 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 I try. I haven't been that successful with the metallic, non-metallic metal technique on any of my miniatures. I can do it on paper. And I can do it on a painting, but on a 3D sculpted model, oh, not so much. It's not that easy again, because you need to really go in and decide where all these reflexes should go. So I'm just trying the best I can with this sword of hers. And starting out with the light colors and then adding in darker, darker colors just to make it give this illusion of uh, of shine apothecary white and uh, that's only for her bandages around her her legs uh, those i don't really know what's called and this is only for the bandages i just want to give it some some depth and uh, these contrast paints they're they're great at uh, doing uh, doing stuff like this if you don't want to use up all your time and blending and mixing colors just to get it right then these contrast paints they're, they're brilliant i was a bit skeptic when they first got announced but I, I like them so back to this non-metallic metal technique on the sword 
I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm really, really struggling. As you can see, I made too many of these dark and light sources. And I'm trying one more time, adding more and more dark to, to the paint mixture. And again, I should only have used one or two of these transitions between dark and, and white. Yeah, you learn every time. So I <laughs> did it all over. I erased everything and made it only with the uh, very few of these transitions. Now I'm trying as best as I can to make it have these uh, edge highlights with white. But here's the biggest problem. When you are painting up 3D models uh, with uh, 3D printed models, resin model, then when there is, when short swords like that, or how should I explain it? Where it's very, very fragile, this mold, the sculpt, and it's not that itchy. It's really rough around the edges. I could have uh, used a file and just filed along, but I was afraid that I would break it. So it's very difficult to get a very clean edge highlight on this. As you can see, it's very edgy. Again, I'm not going even going to pretend that I'm good at making these non-metal metal techniques. So if you want to really learn that, I suggest you find other videos that are better at teaching you these kind of techniques. For me, I just suck. Now I wanted to do, again, non-metal metal technique, this time with gold. I didn't have quite the correct recipe, but I, I, just, tr I just did something. Uh, sometimes you just have to do something, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, well, tough luck. <laughs> then you can just do it all over again. But the end of result I, uh, I managed to get with this, it was, it was okay. I used up Scrag Brown as the base color, and then I just added lighter and lighter gold brown and uh, made up this transition as, uh, as you can see here. Again, not the best non-metal metal technique of gold you've seen out there. I've decided to do the, the halo and the, the sword scabbards. No, it's not uh, the sword guard. And there's a, a little tiny jewel inside the sword, so it'll just be basic, starting out with corn red and uh, going lighter and lighter. Here's a, a better look on it, and trying to do this cross in the middle with, the, with lighter red colors of red. And again, mixing it a bit of white and at the final moment I just put in pure white just to 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 highlight it as much as I can and this is tongue straight in your mouth work breathe easily <laughs> And while I have the red out, I decided to do her lower lip. Again, starting out with corn red and just basically trying to, to highlight it with the, these uh, Mephiston red and then again a few drops of white, just to give the, the gleam in, in her lip. So, like that. Not bad. And I'll call the body and the sword done for this moment. Next up is her shoulder pauldron, where I use standard Mechanicus Grey as the base color. Also, I use it to paint the base up. So, standard Mechanicus Grey on her shoulder pad. And at this moment, do not touch her skin. You can always go back and rework it, but it will be a lot of trouble. And as I said, once I had the paint out, I'm just going to smear it all over the base, 
getting that done at the same time. And just let it dry up and then that's the base. Again, here's a picture of my thumb. I'm using the Mechanical Standard Grey to highlight her hood. And just that's the easy part. I've uh, thinned it down a little bit and I'm going to all the raised areas of her hood. And don't remember uh, don't forget to remember the back part of her hood. Fenrisian grey for the highlights on her shoulder pad. And I'm just going all over the the raised areas, not really thinking about where the 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 raised areas are. They they are actually quite good sculpted. And while I have it out, I can do these extreme highlights on her hood for when I made it with the Mechanica Standard Grey. And this time around, you need to be a bit more careful, just concentrating on the raised areas, the most raised areas. And now we need to go in with some Nolan oil and that's just for the base. I'm smearing it all over the place just to get into all the recesses, not touching her feet or anything like that. This is just to, to get, give some, uh, some texture to the, to the base. I don't really care about bases. Uh, I, it, it's a long story. So <laughs> you can always get that. Corax white, remember I did the apothe apothecary white on her bandages. <laughs> I still don't know what is it called. But uh, just to pick out the highlights in the edges on it. And then I'll call Solaria done. I hope you liked this video. And as you can see on the final project, project the non-metallic metal wasn't quite as good as i hoped but i showed this to one of my friends and he didn't even notice the the sword i don't know why uh, i used up a lot more time making the sword than her body but okay i guess that's uh, that's it for me if you like this video be sure to hit that subscribe button and please leave a comment you will help me grow my channel so stay tuned next time and stay nerdy.